What's up, what's up, all you juggalos and juggalettes, all you cheap scarf breath getting through crew, what's up? Today is Let's Talk Tickers on Taco Tuesdays, and it is a week of growth. Growth, rebuilding, strengthening, and uh, I'm going to continue that theme, finally, and actually live it up to Taco Tuesdays, talking tickers. And I'm eating tacos. I got some tacos. And yesterday, when I went to get some hamburgers, I accidentally ordered the Impossible, which is a vegan hamburger, which means I went meatless on Mondays. I don't always do that. It's usually just a figure of speech. So today on Let's Talk Tickers on Taco Tuesdays, we're going to discuss <sighs> heartbreak. <sighs> Coffee's hot. Sounds good. Heartbreak, disappointment, that feeling in your heart that something is wrong, something dropped. Is that good for us? Is that important? Do we need it? I think we do. I think, again, building off of yesterday, we strengthen that heart and it gets bigger and stronger each time we do hurt ourselves. I wouldn't say seek out pain and suffering, but it is something that does make us stronger each time it happens to us. There are natural losses in life we experience, loss of pets, loss of friends, family members, and it never really feels good and doesn't feel something desirable, but afterwards you do feel a new gratitude for what you do have. And I think with that dopamine kick and that serotonin shuffle, it is important to recognize that we're human, we're in a process of growth and rebuilding and always in a state of flux, of flow, we're not static. The inside feeling of your body is always moving, it's always genetically reproducing and changing. So to go to the extreme with that, you really don't want your heart to get too strong or to grow too big because that's called cardiomegaly. It happens a lot to people who are addicted to cocaine. Particularly smoking crack. Because when one smokes crack, there's a greater absorption, longer lasting effects, and it's hard to switch back to sniffing it through the nose like some bougie ass bitch once you've smoked crack. So, what happens to the body? Hmm. You're giving it something that's going to prevent it from losing its dopamine. It's going to have a massive flux of dopamine. It's, a, it's the hormone in your body that makes you feel good for accomplishing a goal, accomplishing a task. Good job. Cocaine crack gives that to you without, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't do shit. You didn't even, you didn't wash your hands. You didn't cover your nose. You didn't wear a, a mask when you went out in public. You didn't win any goals. You didn't beat the game. You just fucking smoke crack but you feel like you did all those things and it's addictive as fuck from what I understand from what I've heard and the patients who come in have hypertensive crisis crises with their blood pressure is 200s over 100s and it can't come down and they're talking to you but man their eyes are bloodshot and they're verging on a heart attack because that cocaine has just squeezed their heart and it's made it so excited that it's it's torn itself, it's rebuilt anew, and you have a bigger, larger, grinched sized heart at the end of the movie. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't flow well. There's an optimum amount of stretch with the heart. If it's too big, it can't stretch and get all the fluid out of it, all the blood, so it regurgitates, it shoots the wrong direction, you have an even greater chance of clots. So, public service announcement, don't smoke crack. Really don't want to snort cocaine either because this there's a lot of sinus action going on up here and besides talking tickers if you can't breathe if your sinuses feel congested it gives you a panicked feeling and that panic feeling may not be heart damage it may not be heart problems but in its effect, in its consequences, there will be heart problems because you'll panic, you'll breathe faster to try to get more oxygen and your heart will beat faster and stronger and freak out. So, on top of not smoking crack, I would advise as well to not snort cocaine. There may be some kind of argument to just chew the coca leaves. Probably gives you a stomach ache. 
where the cocaine comes from, but I just don't see any scientifically approved way of using something that has been has been made and synthesized with kerosene and caustic chemicals, especially putting it into your one of your your sweetest and most vulnerable cavities, like your nose. Oh, don't do that. You know how much work your body does to protect things, protect you and protect it from having things get in your nose? So, the quick anatomy breakdown of the nose, you have tons of hair. Hairs are grabbing it, grabbing all the gunk and keeping it from going into your brain and into your lungs and getting into your bloodstream. Not only are there little hairs that filter, but those also warm it because it's easier to exchange oxygen and di carbon dioxide when it's warmer. And on top of those, you got the sinuses, which are like basically cups. There's, there's a maxilla behind your head, there's ethno, ethmoid, sphenoid, all kinds all around your, your eyes just to catch and relieve pressure so you don't have to ingest all of that outside world. And one more step, there's turbinados, or turbinates, turbinados is a fake sugar, turbinates that go in your room and then look like little, um, like little levels in a house but what they do is they catch again they catch junk that keeps your body cleaner so with that being said don't snort cocaine up your nose your body does a lot of work to try to keep it out and it makes you look stupid i hope everyone has had a wonderful let's talk ticker on taco tuesdays i look forward to seeing you tomorrow and hopefully you're getting out a little earlier than me and enjoying some of the sunlight in this shelter in place most of us are going through thank you guys i'll see you tomorrow